Hello, my beautiful co-creators. Welcome at another episode of the Money is Love interview series. And in this interview series, I will be interviewing conscious spiritual people who already made at a transition from lack into abundance and who can teach us how to also do that. And this is the very first interview I will be doing in English, so please bear with me. <laughs> but today I will be interviewing a very, very special guest. His name is Bentinho Masado, and he's a um, spiritual teacher. He teaches us all about how we create our reality, and especially a, cre a reality filled with joy and love and abundance. <laughs> and I'm very, very honored and blessed to do this interview. I was at his event in Amsterdam this weekend, and it was filled with joy and bliss and it was really epic so i can't wait to have a, this interview and and ask you all about your relationship with money <laughs> cool yeah, yeah. And, and that is my first question what is your relationship with money what is your view on money um i, I love it yeah <laughs> i mean it's a broad question so simple answer would be it's it's great yeah my, my relationship with money is great and uh, was it always, was money always easy for you? Um, no. And can you tell <laughs> us a little bit about that, how that relationship developed uh, sure. over the years? Sure. So, well, I was raised in just, let's say, a poor household. And yeah. um, so a lot of the, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of the um, subconscious messages that I got from my parents and my situation was, uh, it wasn't like we didn't have anything, but we went through periods where we didn't have anything. Yeah. Um, in between periods where we were just normal, average household. Um, but so I did get, I did get quite a few of those imprints yeah. of lack mm -hmm. and, uh, and um, scarcity. So I, as I started to um, do what I do for the world and um, and start a couple of businesses, and I definitely noticed that these kinds of imprints came up, that these kinds of beliefs came yeah. up. And the thing about this is that when you take it one step at a time and you start stepping up how much you receive and how much you give yeah. and how much you receive and how much you give, it becomes its own teacher and it develops its own momentum. Mm -hmm. So it's very hard to go from from complete lack based belief system where you attract lack yeah uh, or the illusion of lack to yourself to like you know people always people that are in a lack state they always dream of being a millionaire or a billionaire yeah but that gap to be honest is too big even though from the universe's point of view it doesn't matter no. like whether it's one zeros behind the one yeah. or one zero behind the one or or ten zeros behind the one it's the same number, like it doesn't matter to the universe. But in our belief system, it matters. And so yeah. if you try to overshoot what you believe is possible, then you'll just create further, a, a bigger sense of I don't have it yet. Yeah. It's not here yet. So you reinforce the feeling of lack. Yeah. So I think it's important to take it one step at a time and build up your sense of worthiness and your sense of falling in love with the energy flow of money. Yeah. And when you can do that one step at a time, then when you when you take one leap or one step into a, a higher realm of more abundance flowing through you then that step will automatically activate access mm. to the next step so it yeah. will open doors that um that don't tend to open yet until you open the one yeah. right before it yeah. so i noticed that as i continue to step up this this um the vibrational game which is what it is this energy game this game of belief systems yeah. um, Every time I hit a new level, I reached a new space of ease within myself with the idea of money. It became less, um, less important, yeah. less idolized, less put on a pedestal, yeah. and more just like, oh yeah, of course, yeah. of course, wh yeah. why not? It's yeah. just happening. So, and also with each level, I found new subtler beliefs that I had about lack and about money. Yeah that then also get a chance to be resolved and then the next door opens and the next door opens. Yeah. And now I can say it's a pretty fluid experience. Yeah, yeah. because I also uh, heard someone tell one time that uh, the, um, the longing for a million dollars uh, or euros uh, is also a belief in lack in itself. 
I, I would agree, yeah. So basically people believe that, because what do we really want? We don't want money. We want no. to be able to do what we want to yeah. do. And, and money is one of the predominant means in our society to go about and do what we want to do yeah. in a lot of cases. But that is actually not entirely true. In fact, people believe it's true way more than it actually is. Yeah. So when people discover that they can actually activate a flow of abundance within themselves, an abundance energy, an abundance state of being, then from that state of inspiration and empowerment, they can create so many circumstances that bypass the need for money. Yeah. That completely yeah, go outside of the issue. conventional realms of how things normally happen. Yeah. So you'll attract the right people at the right time, you'll attract the right opportunities or the right gifts or the right whatever. Yeah. So that you can actually do what you want to do without actually having to pay for it or without, or maybe you're paying for it, but these means did not show up until you actually started moving. Yeah. And people often wait to make their moves in life until the money comes in yeah. or until whatever other means they perceive they yeah. need come in. So then they have a dream and they want to go there, but then they start sitting still and wait for the means to have life deliver their dreams. But it should be the other way around. So you, first you have to take action. First you have to step in the direction of your dreams. First you have to start living as you would in your ideal reality. More and more, as much as you can, mimic or imitate what that would be like to live in that way. Start taking those steps for real with yeah. trust in the universe. And then the means will come rushing in behind you to support you to go to that goal. Yeah, as a slipstream you described it yesterday. Yes, so it's, yeah. not that the, it's not that the means will pull you towards the yeah. end. It's that you simply move towards the end. And the closer you get to the end, the more all the means will show up yeah. to get you there. Yeah, and yesterday you were also really uh, powerful in, um, in that message t uh, telling uh, us do what you want to do, just go for it and the means will follow. Uh, and you um, literally said to one of the, um, the men who asked you a question, uh, just quit your d job tomorrow and go do what you uh, want to do with your life. Is that something you would recommend to anyone, to everyone? Almost anyone, but of course, my main recommendation is follow your own resonance and excitement. Yeah. So if you do not feel that you believe you can quit your job, if you truly believe yeah. you cannot, yeah. then don't, because yeah. you cannot. Because whatever you believe will become true. Yeah. So, but if you have some openness that, and you do feel at the core of your being like, no, I could quit my job. Somehow something could happen. Yeah. And you don't want to be there anymore, then don't be there. Yeah. Now, if you don't want to be there, but you really believe you need it, then stay there but work on your belief system until mm. you no longer believe you need it yeah. and then you start making moves yeah. in that way and how do people build up that trust to to make steps in that direction by breaking free from the spell of not taking action so first they need to have a leap of faith um, yeah as soon as you even if it's a small one a minor leap of faith but every time you take a leap of faith the universe will show you that it's okay, that it's okay. Oh, it's okay. Can I do this? I don't think I can, but let's do it anyway. Yeah. Whatever. I just, I'm so excited about it. You do it and everything is fine. And you're like, oh, it's okay. And then you build up the momentum. So life starts confirming and, and throwing evidence um, your way that this is the way it works. Yeah. And then at some point it's just natural. And you know, when you recognize within yourself that there is something that you're really passionate about and it feels like, yes, amazing, I'm going to do that. Then you're just going to do that. You're not yeah. even thinking like, oh, what about the means? Because yeah. you know from past experience that the means always show up. Yeah. yeah, I think the number one reason why people get stuck on that part is that they are waiting for permission. They're waiting for someone to, to tell them it's okay mm -hmm. and it's safe. Yeah. But you can only tell that to yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's great. Okay, I have a, a few other questions I want to run through. Um, this was a question from one of my uh, clients. She really would like to know if the amount of money you make uh, depends on the amount of self worth you experience. I say yes, but um, of course, this is a relative equation. In other words, um, you cannot exactly say that a million dollars equals to this amount of worthiness. Some people feel more self-worth, but they may not have a million dollars. So it's not an exact equation, but in general, 
whatever you receive for yourself. Basically, if you receive whatever you feel you need in order to do what you want to do, yeah. then yes, you're on track with increasing your sense of receptivity towards love and abundance. And yeah. therefore, um, your sense of self-worth is increasing, is aligning itself with the way the universe already sees you, which is perfect, divine, yeah. and, and, and placed here for a reason. Yeah. And so that is always supported. The more you believe that, the more you will see that. Yeah, because I see a lot of spiritual people who have beautiful gifts to share, but they're really afraid to ask for money mm. or to open the, themselves up to receive money from other channels. Yeah. They just are blocked mm. somehow. Mm. What, do you, what is your advice for those people? Well, the way I did it, I always started with, I always had this great sense of like, I want to give everything for free as much as I can. So yeah. when I started out, I did everything donation based for yeah. quite a few years. Um, and at some point that started actually supporting me enough. Well, actually pretty much from the start that started supporting me enough to where I could just live my life and go to the events I had to go to or wanted to go to. And from there it built itself. And then at some point it got to a level where I could no longer do it that way because, um, in order to reach more people and in order to expand, uh, I had to start charging. And so I went through a little period of feeling bad about that or feeling mm -hmm. guilty about what uh, asking for money. And of course, especially in the spiritual community, yeah. and especially if you shift from a donation based system to um, a payment based system, yeah. you will get a lot of um, a lot of negative comments your way. So a lot of people were like, uh, you know, commenting negatively on that. Yeah. So that was a good reflection for me to um, check in whether or not I felt I was actually worthy of my dream of reaching the whole world instead yeah. of just like this like weird little fluffy spiritual crowd of people that don't want to pay for anything because yeah. they're also messed up themselves. So, um, and, and, and they feel the, really protective of the lack that they have experienced, yeah. right? So, and I really strongly felt like, no, I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna say no to everybody else because I know my message is helpful. I know my message helps a lot of people and can help so many more. So my focal point was expansion. Yeah. So it seems like the most selfless thing to do would be to not charge for money. But actually the most selfless thing to do was to charge for money. So I had to make that choice to sacrifice my self image for the sake of being selfless to reach more people. Yeah. And so um, I made that choice because every time I recognize that a choice is actually more within integrity with my soul, I make that choice no matter what, because yeah. otherwise I feel bad. Yeah. So I can't live for my self image. I have to live within my integrity yeah. towards my spirit, towards what inspires me, towards what I know is true. So, so that's what I did. And so I, I broke through a big barrier there for myself in terms of lack. And then more money came in and we, we, you know, we could afford equipment and more people and that kind of stuff. And it just expanded from there. Yeah. But once you, once you break from, break out of that initial lack cycle and you start your first expansion, you're good to go. Like yeah. you might have challenges along the way and you might have to face your beliefs again and again a few more times. Um, but, but you know, it's like uh, pushing a, a ball of a hill, it just starts building momentum. So once you break through that first barrier of lack and you start actually believing in your dreams, standing what you stand for, believing that you have something to share that's val valuable and you charge for it if that feels right. And I don't charge for everything. And sometimes I pay for people's hotels to, you know, if it feels right intuitively, someone says I can't come to their retreat. Sometimes I even pay for their flight or their hotel or whatever. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. I'm really, really generous with everything that I have yeah. because it's not about holding on to it, no. but it is about setting it up in such a way that large and by there is enough, there is enough of a flow generated because I can receive and give and receive and let go and receive yeah. and let go that this, um, platform can expand itself to reach more people, which is my most important thing yeah. to set free people. So, um, anyway, when you set that, when you, when you take that first step, you, you're good to go. I mean, like yeah. it's guaranteed, almost 100% guaranteed that you will also take the next step yeah. because you start getting a taste yeah. for being rebellious against your own belief systems. You start getting the hang of and, and, and enjoying that flavor of just being bold and just trying it and taking yeah. a leap of faith. So once you take a leap of faith once or twice, 
you'll get addicted to taking leaps of faith and then you will find more and more confirmation of yeah. abundance in your life yeah totally get what you mean yeah cool. well, once you um you up level one time mm -hmm. it becomes yeah easier to receive yeah to absolutely know that it is possible absolutely yeah beautiful okay and um one of the questions i received um was is it possible to take quantum leaps a lot of people w want to know about taking quantum leaps because they're i think they're anxious and they and they are in a place where they not feel totally happy and they want to be somewhere else so they would like to take a quantum leap <laughs> well scientifically spiritually scientifically speaking every step you take every change you make is a quantum yeah. leap because you wouldn't be able to perceive a different reality if it wasn't differently configured at a quantum level so to speak so the energy is is derived differently from that field of energy that makes up everything as soon as you make any change whatsoever if i change my pinky i'm in an alternate universe yeah. literally there is a different configuration of universal energy so any leap is a quantum leap start with at least knowing that like oh hey i'm taking quantum leaps all the time so it's not that big of a deal um but the in the way most people understand the term quantum leap is basically doing something that's outside of your belief system of what's possible or reasonable right so instead of making a minor change that you believe can work you take a big leap of faith against all your fears so you try to like jump over all your fears and belief systems yeah while this is possible it it's not always easy to integrate mm. after the fact because if you do have strong attachment to those negative belief systems after you take the leap of faith you will attract to yourself a lot of challenges that will ask you are you sure you believed yeah. you can handle this new change that's why a lot of people win a million dollars but lose a million dollars yeah. or make a big change but then their boss gets back at them with a with a, with a how do you say that lawsuit or yeah. whatever you know <laughs> yeah so you will attract experiences to yourself that reflect your belief system yeah. so sure take leaps of faith whenever you feel you can but just be prepared because there might be a day two experience as i call it yeah. day one meaning you're inspired to make a change you take the leap of faith yeah. day two is the day of cha challenge yeah. where you're in invited by the universe to check in with your belief systems yeah. to see if you're ready to let go of those negative beliefs yeah. and really believe in your worth to continue yeah. following your dreams and if you if you make it through day two with belief in yourself and a great sense of self-worth you reach day three which is the day of celebration and transformation and yeah. confirmation yeah and that is really really important to um to comprehend that um that day two belief as you describe it that the universe asks you are you really ready do you really want this and if you yes. say yes and you say it f with all your heart uh -huh. then beautiful things happen yep and when this quantum leaps are easier to actually take and fulfill if the stakes are higher sometimes yeah. so meaning maybe 10 years into your job you're kind of depressed about it and you kind of want to change but yeah. 15 years into your job you've had it and you're yeah. about to kill yourself yeah. so then it's like well i don't even care anymore yeah. if 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 this is not possible i don't know it's just all or nothing so i'll just take that leap of faith yeah. so usually people push themselves to the brink of destruction um, or suicidal depression before they actually make that change yeah. they will make it so bad on themselves before they start just like well i'll have to trust the universe at this point otherwise there's no sense in no. continuing in my life yeah. in this way so that can be a really powerful trampoline to take a quantum leap that is then always successful yeah. but people don't have to wait for the they wall. don't have to wait for it <laughs> they don't have to wait for it. but the thing is when they're pushed to that kind of a scenario then the energy behind that choice is so total that they will make it through their day two experience yeah whereas if you take that leap of faith before you are really completely fed up yeah. with your present reality then you will challenge yourself and you will go forward and back a little bit and yeah. forward and back a little bit but that's great too yeah but i'm just saying when you the times people really take what people call quantum leaps is when they are completely fed up yeah. with their reality and they don't care anymore about their belief system they yeah. just this is all or nothing yeah go well if you can cultivate that in fact that's what i've cultivated for myself in my life meaning that i'm a vibrational perfectionist or a vibrational snob with my reality meaning if there's something that perpetuates itself that keeps coming back and i don't feel good about it i don't tolerate it 
So I will check in with myself and I will make the necessary changes no matter what. Yeah. I've become really, become really precise with what I desire yeah. and simultaneously really open and flexible to let the universe show me however it wants to take me to those places. But simultaneously, I really am very specific in my vibration and what I prefer within myself. So when there's a lot of things going on or just a few things going on that are not of that resonance, I check in immediately. I don't endure, I'm not gonna sit there for no. two years or even two hours. Yeah. I'm gonna check in with myself. If it doesn't feel good, I'm gonna make whatever vibrational changes I need to make within my state of being and my way of thinking and my way of acting and communicating with other people to where that is then changed immediately. Yeah. So I make quantum leaps all the time because I have very, very low tolerance for negative re yeah. realities or things I don't desire. So, but this is practice. At some point you become vibrationally perfectionistic. Yeah. And um, this doesn't mean you become, you become unkind or uncompassionate or not open anymore. In fact, you need all these qualities in order to continue to ex expand so fast. But you do become really precise and you don't tolerate any negative accumulation within yeah. yourself. You know what is possible and why uh, yes. settle for anything True. less? True, exactly. Because it's also really difficult to bring the highest version of yourself when you are not taking care of your own vibration. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Okay. <laughs> and um, what a lot of people find really difficult to do is to trust that there is always enough um, mm. One of uh, the people who sent in a question, they say, um, it is really difficult for me to really believe that the universe always provides. They say, um, I think it's too good to be true. Uh -huh. It's a fairy tale. Uh -huh. Well, people forget to look around themselves. Like we're sitting on a, on a bloody couch here. Yeah. What does this consist of? Like trillions of vibrating particles, waves, and somehow this illusion, this holographic illusion is making up this experience that supports everything. We're breathing automatically, our hearts are beating, we're communicating, we're having a good time. Um, you're looking at my watch, uh, just everything that's happening, you know, like this whole experience is always supported. So start with how you're already supported. Because when you think you're not supported, you're not paying attention yeah. to what's actually going on. You're supported. There's gravity right now. You're not, even though the planet is spinning at 1600 kilometers an hour, you're not flying off into outer space. There is an order to things. There is intelligence behind things. We are supported to be here. The fact that my body doesn't just fall apart right now is against all logical odds. Yeah. It's not a random event. This is all orchestrated. Every single nanosecond, the entire infinite intelligence of the creator itself, creation itself, backs up every single moment. So the fact that something shows up that you don't like doesn't mean you're not supported. It means that you are supported in your belief systems. Something shows up, let's say a lack of money. That is because you believe in a lack of money. Yeah. So the universe supports that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's no lack of support. There's just a mistaken identity happening. There's a mistaken vibration that you assume to be true. And when you shift that vibration, that which infinitely supports everything simultaneously, all at once, more so than we ever could figure out mentally, that same mysterious infinite intelligence will start working in the way that we want it to. The problem is not, we're not that we're not supported. The problem is that we create things we don't want. So we have to change our vibration. And then that same system that has been in place before the beginning of time is going yeah. to provide. But just notice that it's providing you with lack. Yeah. But that is provision. Yeah. That is abundance. You create an abundance of lack. Yeah. You create an abundance of pain, yeah. an abundance of sickness. How yeah. beautiful. Yeah. But you can also create an abundance of joy, an abundance of money, and an abundance of good relationships. Yeah. There is no difference in the eyes of the universe. That's why they call it sometimes the law of attraction, because it's a law. It doesn't matter what you want. What matters is what you send out, yeah. what you are vibrating at. It has to respond to that. Yeah. Higher self would love to give you everything you want, but it cannot because by law, by nature of the universe, like attracts like. So you need to shift your frequency to be in that state where you can then start to perceive the realities 
that you desire instead yeah. of the reality she don't desire. Yeah. So stop pointing fingers and calling things negatively. Start realizing within yourself who you are, what you desire, and start calling everything by that name. Yeah. Start seeing what you want, even if it's not physically here yet. And until and start seeing it until you start feeling it. And when you start feeling it, you start believing in it and being it and acting as it. And then the universe will respond to that new frequency yeah. as much as it does to your lack frequency. Beautiful. The universe is always already supporting you it's exact yeah in what you uh what you put out there yeah what you are not what yeah. you think or want no. yes exactly. what are you right and that now? Is, what are you being that is the lesson it is yeah <laughs> okay um so one last it's, question it's, it's before, a we, uh, before we uh, end the interview um uh, there are a lot of um, uh, coaches or business coaches who teach uh, to um, set a uh, desired income, for example, 5,000 or 10,000 euros, doesn't matter, um, and then take steps to achieve that income by, um, uh, uh, by making sales or something. Mm -hmm. But that feels really restricted. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you look at that and what is your way to to open the gate, that you, gate? You, you can do that as a vibrational game but it has to be playful yeah it can't be your life can't not depend on it because yeah. if you do that you start waiting for the numbers to show up and when you start waiting the universe starts waiting yeah. so you literally stop that abundance process from happening let's say that three months from now you want to make five thousand dollars a month more that's your goal if that's your focal point, like, okay, so then I can start living or doing what I want to do. We, we, you can think that, but if you don't take that very playfully and lightly, but it, you really hang your hat on it, you yeah. really wait for it, what happens is that, okay, so you might make some progress and you might, you might approach that goal, but as soon as you become too serious about that goal and you basically start hoping that you can start living here like okay i can't wait until this is reached because then i can start living from here in this way but as soon as you do that you wait you stop actually moving you start just waiting and then this also waits like it can't come to you so you need to continue to do what you want to do as much as you can and then you're reeling in this end result effortlessly yeah. so you can put the goal out there as a thought to the universe and then have no insistence upon its outcome yeah don't hold on so tightly to the expectation. Yeah. Just continue to live. And maybe every other day or every other week, you visualize it again and you, ah, you feel inspired by it. And then you forget all about it. Just let it go, forget about yeah. it. Focus on what excites you the most in this moment. Oh, what brings me joy right now? What brings me joy right now? Yeah. And then the universe will effortlessly bring that into you. Beautiful. That's just the way to do it. It is, it really is. Okay. Are there any last things about money and uh, about your view on money and, um, and abundance that you would like to share before we end this interview? Those that help people become abundant will themselves most definitely channel abundance through themselves. So if the focus of your money is too selfish, Hmm. oriented and too much about like because I want to live this yeah. way and it's not fluid it's not open it's not playful and it doesn't s seem to want to be in service of flow it just wants to be here and stored for later or used in some way but not really flowing then it can't really come to you I mean in rare cases it can because it's relevant for that individual to go through that experience but in most cases this is why it doesn't happen for those people so you got to be in a state of flow and generosity. Like yeah. you got to constantly be open and intuitive about how you spend your money. You got to be generous with yeah. it. And you got to not feel like you have to hold on to it. No, be generous with yeah. it. So, so it's give, learn to money. give as well. Learn to give, yeah. learn to give. Thank you. It was really beautiful. I think you helped a lot of people to shift some really important beliefs about money. Excellent. And uh, if you want to know more about Bentinho, go to his website. I will put up a link, bentinhomassaro.com, I think, .com. <laughs> <laughs> .com. <laughs> and um, he has a beautiful academy where he shares his teachings. And I just joined myself this morning. So, and I heard uh, lots of beautiful things uh, about uh, the things you share in your academy. Mm. So go there and learn as much about this beautiful 
person as you can. Which is and yourself. <laughs> of course. Thank you very much for watching and thank you. Thank, thank you. you. This was fun. Yeah.